Well, my name is Sue Andrews. I had my liver transplant in May 2001, which makes me Dr. Darcy's first ever liver transplant patient. We're good friends, Dr. Darcy and I. We've seen a lot of each other over the years. And to coin a phrase, he knows me inside and out. I always celebrate my rebirth day, as I call it, May the 19th, 2001, with my family and friends. They're very generous. I get flowers and cards and balloons and gifts. I always remember to the family of a 23-year-old girl from Ireland whose family are grieving on the day that we are celebrating. Without her generosity and forethought, I would not be here today. I'm going to tell you a bit today about my journey down the Great Transplant Highway with all its twists and turns, ups and downs, and I have to say, a few cul-de-sacs on the way. Nowadays, when you set off on any unfamiliar journey, all you do have to do is set the sat-nav, put yourself in its hands, and hope it will get you to your destination safely and without too much stress. In 2001, sat-navs weren't as popular as they are today, but I was very lucky. I had two great sat-navs, Dr. Davis and Dr. Daz, who made sure I kept to the right road and kept looking straight ahead. A Chinese philosopher once said, every long journey starts with one small step. My small step started a long time ago. <clears throat> I'm 65 now. And I was only 16 when I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And at that age, I was given a colostomy. Before the operation, I was told that this colostomy would be permanent and therefore I wouldn't be able to have any children, which at 16 was quite a blow. However, I was so fortunate that in the end, I was given a temporary colostomy, which I had for two and a half years. And I now have two wonderful daughters and two amazing grandchildren, Isaac and Imogen. I've been very lucky, I think, with the medical care I've received. First with Dr. Miller at Withington Hospital, and then with Dr. Das here at Stepping Hill. I don't really think that I understood completely how ill I was with PSC. Um, I was a lovely shade of yellow, very, very jaundice. In fact, I learned only recently that my family renamed me Marge after Marge Simpson. One of the things I'm now aware of is that I have very little memory of that time, really. Um, probably due to the, what was turning into be a life-threatening disease and also the combination of a cocktail of drugs that I was taking at the time. Things came to a head in about March 2001 when after yet another stay in Stepping Hill, Dr. Daz said that he would like me to, he would like to refer me to his colleagues at Jimmy's in Leeds for their assessment and advice. So off I went and had a week full of almost every medical test, I think, under the sun. Um, and by the Friday, the verdict was in that a transplant would be the very best thing to me. When we asked the doctors what would happen without one, their reply was, I possibly could have possibly between three weeks and two years to live. Um, so it wasn't really an option. Um, I had so much more I wanted to do. I wanted to see my daughters grow up and hopefully see some grandchildren as well, which of course I did. So I was sent home then to think about it. And I spoke to my family and friends and my medical people back here. And we were all in the same agreement that this had to be done. One of the hardest things I had to come to terms with on the waiting list and it was so, so hard, was the fact that somebody would have to die before I had a chance to get better. This was really difficult to accept, but I had to realise that somebody hadn't died because of me. Nobody had gone out into the street and grabbed somebody and said, Sue needs a liver, we'll have yours. Um, somebody had died and I had the gift of life because of that. I saw my, my journey as a partnership really. I had Dr. Davis and Dr. Daz alongside me and 
I had my wonderful family and friends. I called them my A team, as an A for Andrews. They were with me every step of the way. Little by little, my strength did return. Not only my physical strength, but also my mental attitudes seemed to get a lot better too. I began to realise what's important in this life. And okay, and when things are down to the wire, it's the family and the friends you have. Their love, support and kindness. This is the most important thing that a person can ever have. Living with a transplanted organ isn't always a picnic. One of the greatest problems I have to face every day is the risk of infection. Um, it, is, it is an ongoing situation that um, will always be the same, but you know, that's it's just something that you have to take on board at this time. I have great belief in my doctors, in the powers of medical science, and most days, but not all, belief in myself. I can't say what hurdles, cul-de-sacs and hills I may have to meet in the future. All I can say is that I feel I owe it to the people who have given me their time, expertise, love and support to do the very best that I can. Can I please take this opportunity to thank Dr. Das here at Stepping Hill with all my heart and Dr. Davies too at Jimmy's and their teams for the wonderful work they do on our behalf. The work they do is nothing short of miraculous and there are many people enjoying a good life today who would not be around if it wasn't for their dedication and expertise.